Hi, everybody. Adam Savage in my cave for another live stream. Good morning. It is California morning. Uh, as I'm speaking to you now, it's a 11 a.m. on the West Coast. The weather today, you didn't ask, but it's gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> despite all the uh, extreme weather troubling our country lately, San Francisco itself has uh, has just had what felt like a, well, it's still in the midst of, what feels like a very normal old-timey San Francisco winter where it rains about two days out of six and the rain isn't torrential. It's kind of a pissy rain. It doesn't really commit, but it kind of keeps everything damp. Um, but apparently the rains have been pervasive enough along with the wildfires that have happened in previous seasons that uh, up in the Petaluma area, about 30 plus miles north, the hills, which are just brown all the time, are apparently green. And uh, my sons, who drove up there recently, told me that it was bizarre to see the hills of Petaluma neon green with verdant life. That is just not the way I see Northern California. Um, speaking of my sons, Thing 1 and Thing 2 just celebrated very recently their 22nd birthday. Uh, and we had some socially distanced... Uh, a socially distanced birthday with them last night, me and the two of them. It turns out that playing pool is the perfect socially distanced game because, yeah, you could be at opposite ends of the pool table the whole time. You could just be circling each other. Anyway, it was a, a sheer delight. Um, so I am back to working on, which uh, eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed right here in the side of frame. I've got it sitting in um, a vice that I built a few weeks ago. Uh, and as you can see, I've got to, I've made a little progress off camera. Yeah, this thing, <laughs> it's literally blocking my view. This is an astoundingly large model. One eighth scale, right? One eighth scale. Um, I'm often talking about how when I build things, I'm looking for an experience. And, you know, I recognize that the folk at Eagle Moss are restricted by all sorts of concerns about how uh, how thick to mold these things, what materials to make them out of, how heavy to make them. And in th at this point in the building process, I kind of feel like it seems pretty clear to me that they're erring on the side of making it heavier than lighter. It's like the final product of this thing is going to be substantial. I mean, just to lift it, it's going to be sort of awesome. It's going to feel... I don't know. I have I have I've been around and seen models of this scale and size and construction before, and they they basically feel so heavy it feels like someone took a real car and just miniaturized it. Like like the density is what would happen if you if you could do something like that. Um, so I am on for those following along at home. I'm on issue eight, which encompasses uh, the uh, car parts stages uh, 23, 24. 25 and 26. Um, and that leaves me, once I'm done with those, I've got 27 through 30 in my bin, and then I'm waiting for more parts. I know some of us get parts earlier than others. I don't know how that works. My friend Jim Fong seems to be way farther along with his build. Um, but that could just be, as I was blinded by all the other incredible kits that Jim has built over the years, I only cursorily noticed how far along he was. But it looked... Oh, got to put a screw in there. Um, but it looked like he was making great gangbusters progress on his. Um, all right, let's get started. Uh, fitting the shock absorbers to the bracket. There's one shock absorber. There's a bracket. There's another shock absorber. And the AP screws are my screws. The screw board is getting bigger. We're now up to the ends. And I've had to already scab a piece of foam core starting here to move on. I think I'm going to have to keep on scabbing. Uh, so this is two AP screws. And I keep on taking my, taking my glasses off to be able to see things clearly. All right, but both of these are identical, so this should be pretty straightforward. I realized, like, the last couple of times I've done the kit, I've just been, like, able to complete very little in the period of time. So I decided to do a little work off camera just to, uh, you know, increase the excitement factor. 
Uh, oh, 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 I see. Ah, oh, no, I got it right. <laughs> uh, there's a little angle on these, and they clearly want to bend outwards per the drawing, and I hadn't noticed the angle when I was first putting the first one in, but I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right, and low reader, I did. Through no fault of my own. Okay, uh, shock absorber bracket. That's this guy, and then... This guy, yep, and <clears throat> JP. JP, wow, it's a very spare cup. The JPs and JMs. Um, oh, I go up from underneath for this, All right? Ooh. Excellent. Um, if at some point I start cursing and sounding like I'm from Boston, it's only because I watched The Departed this weekend for like the 500th time. Look, I know that everyone's got a problem with the rat at the end of that film, but besides that, I think The Departed is almost a perfect movie. Seriously, it is so good. Jack Nicholson is like the worst human being alive in that movie. Uh, okay, are these bilaterally symmetrical? They seem to be. Well, here's hoping they are. Uh, okay, so that, no, that's that, right? Yes. You know what? You know what? I'm going to use an extra pair of hands. That's why I built this vice. I built it to be an extra set of hands, and so I'm going to use it for said. Uh, let's see here. Yep. And, yep. Okay, so DM, 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 lots of DM screws. Not Dungeon Master. Two, come on, six, three, four, five, six, I got seven, all right. So these are the wheel wells and they, Cap right. Oh, oh, they aren't bilaterally symmetrical. Sorry, they are bilaterally symmetrical, but they're not rotationally symmetrical. I know I'm getting even that term wrong, but you know what I mean. Um, they are they are chiral. There's a left and a right side. There we go. That's what I meant to say. Hmm. There is a funny thing that happens in San Francisco when the weather's been rainy for a long time, and then it gets beautiful which is that everyone in the city seems to freak out in a good way. Like everyone just goes out and like, you can just feel the energy out there. It's like, everyone's so relieved to have a gorgeous day. Even like the postman, Patrick is like, damn, it's gorgeous. <laughs> That's a very, um, yeah. It's a, you know, on the, on the, in, in cities where you have actual seasons, that sort of craziness is like a whole seasonal thing. Like I remember in New York, there's just nothing better than going through an East Coast winter and then leaving that and entering into an East Coast spring. Like an East Coast spring is, holy cow, it's just one of the most beautiful things. And you 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 feel almost like genetically driven to like, <laughs> it's just like it's everything is reborn in the spring uh, in a city with seasons. But here in San Francisco, we don't get that. We more like get like periods of time when the weather's not so awesome and periods of time where it's like crazy amazing. Okay, the two wheel wells are in. Oh my God, now I attach this to the, all right, this whole thing's about to get a lot heavier. That was a DM screw. DM, DM. Okay, uh, remove. And pop on. Let's see here. Holy frack. This is gargantuan. Um, okay, so this goes there. And <clears throat> that. And LM. Okay, so I need a bunch of LM screws. We'll just get out two for positioning and then we'll get the rest out when it's ready. Oh yeah, look at that. Holy cow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't, don't, don't. 
Oh, you're not breaking on me. Okay, good. Good, good. All right. DM, DM, LM, LM, right? Yeah. Okay, good. The LMs. Here we go. Ow. Um, I was just thinking about working on your car. I was thinking about how, like, my first car was a Volvo 245 DL 1978. 78 245 DL with the overdrive switch in the middle of the manual transmission. Ah, oh, such a great car, LM. Um, but I'm not here to wax a, uh, nostalgic about Swedish iron. I'm here to talk about like how important it was for me having a car at uh, 23 and, you know, having to work on it myself because that's what I could afford. And I was just like putting together the drive shaft of this thing. That was a step previous to this one. And I was thinking about the, at one point, one of the U-joints in my Volvo, uh, the needle bearings failed. And I used to buy parts from this great place in uh, North Berkeley called R RPR Discount Volvo Parts. They were like cat corner to the Hotsy Totsy Bar. And um, I remember being in there and being like, can I repair my U-joint? He's like, absolutely, I'll sell you one. It's really easy. And I remember like pulling apart I've done almost all the car repair I've ever done on the street, that trick where you park the car on the curb so you can get underneath it. And I pulled my drive shaft out on Baker and McAllister and took it upstairs to my little one room uh, that I had in this apartment and uh, promptly, uh, promptly repaired it. And that felt like crazy. I was literally altering the power transmission of my car. I know it's just a U-joint. It's not that big a deal. But to me at 23, it was a huge deal. Plus... Plus, I could feel the result of my repair when I drove. And that is crazy. Like, that feels like you have a new superpower when you have a car and you make a repair. Like, what is one of the repair? That was the front bumper. I had put it on because I was just like, it was sitting here. And then I forgot that I hadn't attached it. It doesn't look like it suffered any damage not through any fault of my own. Okay, so uh, if this is this, and I need to see the underside, yep. Okay, so how am I gonna grab this? Ooh, oh yeah! Ha ha ha! I am so, so this, we haven't released this one day build yet, have we? Uh, this is from Hemingway Kits, they make, um, kits for machinists to build stuff. And I didn't know about this world, but when you buy a kit as a machinist to build something, <laughs> what you get is just a bunch of cutoffs of metal. You don't, I mean, you get some cast iron parts like this thing, but everything else is literally just like, here's some round stock, here's some square stock, here's some bar stock, and you got to make it yourself. And it's intoxicating. It's really great. Okay, uh, I'm putting on the rear chassis and that goes EC. All right. Oh, 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 okay. Getting excited. Okay, these are all CM screws, so there's a crap ton of those. Um, it looks like it looks like two, four, six, eight, ten of these babies. Okay, my head of my screwdriver is a little magnetized. Three, six, nine, ten. All right, uh, and. Oh, wow, this goes on. I have to screw it in from the other side. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm disappearing from the camera for a second. I know that's sort of like bad form, but there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, Huh. Something is a little bit funky. Something is the tiniest bit funky. Oh, 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 I see what it is. It's those bad boys, the shock absorbers. They're keeping everything from lying flat. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Huh? 
Yeah, yeah. All right. Now I put a, there it is. Oh, a little clamp here to just hold everything together. So, oh, right, I got to go it in from the other side. So, CM, it's the two raised ones back here. There it is. One, two, these, yep. This is, um, every time I'm going through an operation like this and I'm thinking about the coordination of like, here's the thing, this whole project started out with like a, you know, a human being in a tape measure, right? Like so, somebody, somebody assembled the information about these cars and slowly built an entire database so that they could, okay, it's the, yeah. Um, it's just, it's an astounding amount of information to manage when you consider the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of screws of, at this point, 28 different kinds of screws. Just that, I mean, I don't think of the most complex thing I've ever built. There's 28 different kinds of screws. CM, two more there. Yeah, is it those two? It is those two. Oh yeah. I noticed a little, what looks like a speaker grill there that sounds are gonna come out of. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, and then the last two are at either side of the transmission hump. Is it there? It is there, just past that line, there we go. And we're going gangbusters. Okay, moving on to the next page. One of my favorite things. Uh, oh, now, now, now we're into some things. <laughs> um, okay, so that's a deal. That's a deal. I'm going to move that. Part of the radiator. You have to carefully inspect everything to make sure there's not some tiny little envelope of some little screws that you're going to need later because that would be bad. Okay, so now I'm going to stand, sit this up on itself. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is incredible. Uh, oh, these are up here. Very exciting. Uh, that one goes there, and this one goes here. <laughs> oh, neato. Um, DM, DM. Those are the two front ones. So four of those. One, two, three, four. And those are... Front two, yep. Yeah. Front two, DM, DM, yep. Yeah. Oh. I've run into a couple of these screws which are just not that easy to put in. And so I broke out a 172 tap to kind of ease a transition and I did. I have no idea what the actual threading of these screws are. I mean, there's 20, already we've got 24 different kinds. They all different threadings. I get tired just thinking about it. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to start answering some questions that tested patrons have submitted. Um, and the subject of today's live stream, which is probably in the description, um, is one of my favorite movies of all time. A movie I watched only recently, uh, and that's Alien. N-M. Two N-M screws. 
And, and these are the brand newest ones. Uh, and NM is on the outside and CM is on the inside. So NM on the outside. Um, yeah, uh, my mom hadn't seen Alien in a long time. And when she was uh, quarantining with us earlier in 2020, I was like, we should watch it. <laughs> and she said the same thing everyone does when they see it for the first time in a long time is, wow, that's a gothic horror movie. And it's totally a gothic horror movie. CM. Um, I mean, even down to the architecture of the ship is a gothic horror movie, right? Um, yeah. That movie, to say it holds up, it's like, it's not even a thing. It's just so singular. It's such a singular document. Um, I so like, I want to visit there. I want to go there. I've actually, I mocked up and almost built Ripley's workstation. I have in storage some plywood uh, layouts of the, of her workstation because I love it so much. Okay. All those are in. Now it's time to assemble this radiator. And this is a pretty straightforward thing. Six screws. They are all HPs. Ooh, nope. First up, there's a capper, and that's a DP, two DP screws. All right. Yep. Here we go. And DP. These are the right, these are the ones that lock themselves into plastic. This is gonna be a tricky little maneuver. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, also, I watched Alien. I watch Alien, and the more I watch it, the more I wonder, the more I uh, am astounded at Sigourney Weaver. HP, HP. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, um, yeah, Sigourney Weaver's performance in that film is astounding. It's completely amazing. She's, uh, yeah, she does something wholly other. And I, I love how the, I just love the crew dynamics. I love everything about that film. I love the improvisational style that Ridley engendered. I love the fact that he had the actors use all the flatware, plateware, and cupware for weeks before filming so it would look worked in. I love the fact that the sets were built uh, all with a single entrance to the soundstage because Ridley Scott, even at, like for his second movie, knew enough about psychology that he wanted the actors to feel like they were kind of stuck in a ship when they walked onto the set. So it was like this rabbit warren of rooms, each one represented with hallways in between, but apparently the whole soundstage had one entrance. I could be exaggerating because I am prone to exaggeration, but <clears throat> uh, that sounds dreamy to me from a um, from a performing standpoint. And actually, when we visited when we visited the Alien Covenant set, I I actually got to talk to Ridley about it directly, and I said I, I asked about how big the set was, and he was like, "I like my actors to get lost in them. I want them to look around and not be able to see reality, but the reality that we're making." Cool is that? Okay, um, I'm now moving on to the last two steps, but I've been going for just about 30 minutes, so I'm gonna pause and maybe stop here and take some questions. Seems reasonable? Yeah, totally.